Hello guys, this video you watched like the video where Dede Farutumi, we all know him, came out to say that protest is not going to work in Nigeria because of um, the people we are protesting against, they don't even care about the masses. So if you can protest, you can protest for Nancy tomorrow, they don't even make, uh, make an inch, they don't even do anything about the current economic crisis. Because you can imagine after protest, 10 days protest that happened against fuel price, the government went ahead to increase fuel price at the same time. To tell that that they don't send anybody, they don't send anybody. They can protest for that tomorrow. Nothing will happen. So he came up with um, an idea or let's say a solution or how they can get our government attention. But I'll not see it here. I like guys to watch it to the end and don't forget to subscribe and air your views. I will see you guys in a minute. I've heard multiple times people say, "Okay, let's have protest to demand this or protest to demand that." Privately, I will speak to organizers of this protest and tell them, "I don't trust the system. You only protest to somebody who has the capacity to listen to you." These ones do not have the capacity to listen or the will to change. So going to protest will not work. I used to say this repeatedly and I stand by what I used to say. But protests come in different forms. What I am proposing, and I would like to hear what you all have to say. Let's take our time. Let's, let's talk through this and let's debate it. I'm of the opinion that we should have a national seat at home on the 3rd of December. I was careful to run away from the 2nd. I don't want to have a situation where our iPod brothers and myself will now be conflated with each other. That is not to denigrate whatever anybody is doing to win their freedom. But I am proposing, I repeat myself, 3rd of December, let us sit at home. I was away in the United States in September and most of October. And in the course of that time away, as it would usually happen with me, I was opportune to see our country a little clearer. You know, those who are used to astronomy, stargazers, they'll tell you that you actually see clearest, you see the stars clearest when you are in a very dark place. So, I left Nigeria, I was out of it, and I've noticed that each time I'm away from Nigeria, I am better able to see Nigeria, think a little clearer, maybe because one can function a little more humanly, rather than the automaton that you have to be if you must survive Nigeria. You would have heard me say in the past that you go and remove your brain once you come through our airport, put it in a container, so that you don't use your brain to engage with the madness that we live with, that is our daily reality. And you would also have heard me say on multiple occasions that if there were to be a spare part market for human brains, the Nigerian brain would be a bestseller because to a very large extent, um, truth be told, it's rarely ever used. So, And that applies to almost all of us. But the point I'm seeking to make is that whilst I was out of the country, I was able to see things a little clearer, as I was saying. And in the course of that, I found myself drawn repeatedly to the story of the lepers. As was told in the Bible, Second King chapter seven, from verse three to eight, that is what interest. That, that was what interested me. That story kept nagging at my consciousness all the time I was out of the country, and I am honored and privileged to have the friendship of Pastor Sam Ayedogun. So I discussed this with him, and uh, between us we contrived to have me speak, and I thank God for the grace and the privilege. If you haven't seen that message, I'm sure you have seen snippets of it, but I would encourage you take your time, watch it because they also offer some level of context for what I want to speak about today. Um, I was constrained by the pulpit from which I was speaking, not necessarily because anybody placed any constraint on me, but respect for the altar from where I was speaking, respect for the man of God who was good enough to offer me his pulpit, and perhaps because it wasn't time, there were things I realized that I wanted to say that I couldn't say, maybe because of want of time, but there were just things I couldn't say that didn't come that started coming to me after the fact, even after I had had weeks to ruminate over that story and how it applies within the Nigerian context. So I believe it was um, after that, by Thursday, I told my assistant that I would like to stay with the lepers' allegory, the imagery and the symbolisms of the lepers in that story as told in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 to 8. So this week, having talked last week, about the urgency of now, that urgency has not disappeared. But in the urgency of now, we have taken a walk that has now brought us to this moment. And today, what I want us to discuss or talk about is Nigeria, the leper's colony. Yeah, you heard me right. Let me repeat myself. Nigeria, the leper's colony. Those of you who studied English language to an extent, and those of you who have followed me for a season, you understand the fact that I am a student of languages, particularly the English language. 
and I do not like linguistic inexactitude. That is when you use words without communicating properly what it is that you intend. So when I say Nigeria, the leper's colony, and I need you to distinguish, you will get there eventually, but it is important that you know that what I have said is Nigeria, the leper's colony. I didn't say the colony of lepers. I said the leper's colony. So let us look at this. What do I mean by the leper's colony? Leprosy is limiting. Yorubas have a proverb that succinctly describes or explains the dilemma of leprosy. The Yorubas would say, Aberebolo wa adete odete. There is a difference between interpretation and uh, translation. If I translate, if I would translate that for you, I would say that uh, the leper's needle falls on the ground and he struggles to pick it because of the absence of digits. But it would be wrong. Because you have to understand the graphic imagery painted by the Yoruba scripture. He speaks to the dilemma of the man without fingers who has to pick up a needle from the floor. The floor is almost always a dirt floor, sand. Even if it were to be whatever sort of service it might be, when a man is without digits, how does he pick the needle? If you've taken the time to listen to my sermon last week, or if you are, if you are familiar with the story of the lepers as told, you would, of course, understand that it is we Nigerians that I have referred to as lepers. We are the lepers in the story. We are limited by our environment, by the system that we have built. Mazim Nandekanu, in seeking to define Nigeria, he called it a zoo. I have been, you must have heard me or read me say variously that I disagree with him. That Nigeria cannot be called a zoo because if Nigeria were to be a zoo in any other country other than Nigeria, the administrators of that zoo would be facing criminal charges in courts. If Nigeria were to be a zoo, that zoo would have lost its license to operate. If Nigeria were to be a zoo in any country other than Nigeria, the entire wide world would be up in opera. Nigeria is not a zoo. No zoologist worthy of his name will keep animals in the condition that the Nigerian has been kept by the Nigerian state and its reigners. So I disagree with Mazin Nandikano. There are many things he says that I agree with. Aside from methodologies, I have zero or next to nothing in relation to disagreement, to, to, to disagree when it comes to his diagnosis. But when it comes to calling Nigeria a zoo, Nigeria is not a zoo. I have also been heard calling Nigeria a jungle until I believe by a couple of years ago I traveled out of the country, I don't know, it's longer than that. I traveled out of the country and I went to the UK, a place I had routinely gone to for decades. You know, I found that when I got into the UK, I couldn't function because I realized actually Nigeria is not a jungle. Jungles function on order. You can predict the seasons in the jungle. Animals know their places in the jungle. Everybody operates by divine orchestration and order. The jungle operates on law. You may call that the law of nature, but the jungle operates on law. It functions on the basis of predictable order. That is the jungle. Nigeria does not function on the basis of any predictable order. The only thing that you can predict about Nigeria is that what should happen will not happen and what shouldn't happen are the things that we have organized. So Nigeria is not a jungle. Nigeria is the leper's colony. For the benefit of those who are not in church last Sunday, literally, what is the leper's colony? I have just told you about the dilemma of the leper when the leper seeks to pick up his needle. But how do you call the Nigeria a leper? If you look to the story as told in that biblical passage, you'd find that the lepers were outside the city gates. The city gate provides protection for those within its walls. That is allegorical of a state, of a protective entity. For you to have a gate, you must have walls. As fearful as the city walls, they were still behind the wall. But the lepers, they were at the gate. Not within, not without. They were not disallowed from entry, mind you. It's just that those whose beneficiaries they would have fed from are also starving because of the siege. And in any case, what was the point of going around streets where people are already hungry and hostile? So they sat at the city gate, excluded. That is how the Nigerian is routinely excluded from the society. Left out, shut out. 
the others were inside. The Nigerian is the lever, always at the city gate. I recall that in my sermon last week, I alluded to our brother, the boat driver and customs of the mascot. I referred to him, but it's only important in the context of discussion today because during the course of the week, we were all entertained or reports, as the case may be, by the video we made apologizing. But here is the thing what did you expect of him? Exactly what were you expecting of him? If he had said he was going to court, he would still meet the same people in court. Have you forgotten? Mascot was given 500,000 bill, I think. Those boys got 10 million naira bill. And I think one or two shorty before your outcries led to their release. And by the time they were releasing them, did you notice that they appeared to have been grandfathers being released instead of the young boys that we saw in court? So you find a situation where once you build a system that systematically excludes, which is the society that has been built by Nigeria, and understands that the exclusion is not found on any one of the many things that we have clung to as the basis for our disadvantages, we would like to think it's about tribe, ethnicity, I'm sure. Remember Abu? The sex toy one that was busy slapping. Yeah? It's from a northern minority ethnic group. Minority religious group. But he had the powers of unity that would all prefer to ascribe to whichever tribe or ethnic group as power and is riding lot short over everybody. Remember, we would have said, hmm, he's a northerner. Or Abu, nothing happened. He slapped happily, left, right, and center. Maybe money changed out at the end of the day, I don't know that detail. And then the boat driver, what did you want of him? Where is the system to protect him? He's a leper like me and you. He took what he considered the best deal in the circumstances. A man tells you that he'll make you disappear because you are rude to him. And then he'll go and you start talking about court. Which court? What courts? So let me, let's not, I'm just trying to help us to understand the fact of our leprosy so that you understand that we have built a system that excludes a system that is not excluding is not excluding on the basis of ethnicity it is not excluding on the basis of religiosity it excludes on the basis of social class if you're rich you can't do any wrong in Nigeria and if you run afoul of some rich person and punishing you or the system itself is punishing you and you can afford it eventually even if you are convicted like Bobrisky was convicted you really didn't need to worry because eventually there is an apartment somewhere for convicted criminals who can afford it. So at the end of the day, you have a system that has continued to exclude. But remember what I said to you at the beginning. There is a difference between the leper's colony and the colony of lepers. The leper's colony is the one that is built without the will of the lepers, built by external forces, by persons external to the lepers. They are forced to live in the state of leprosy. The Nigerian may excuse himself and say that that is the situation. After all, Britain cobbled this together. And after all, he has never had his will expressed. Even I have said so multiple times. But at some point, the colony of lepers is the difference now. The colony of lepers, because we have will. We are the ones who have built this lepers colony by abdicating the responsibility to build our own country. We failed to take our faith in our hand. We have built the leper's colony. I see you, treasure, hold on. I'm getting there. You say, what's the solution? The solution is clear. The solution became even clearer after the death of my friend, Atishino Gulano. We are all creatures in time and we must identify that which has been given to us to do within a specified, specific time span, a lifetime. Play your part. What's the solution? Find a country. How do you find a country? Take responsibility for your lives. I have heard people talking about waiting until 2027. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing in 2027 that we did not do in 2023. Yeah, we probably would have more time, but nothing will change. For as long as INEC is INEC, our courts remain our courts, and we do nothing but wait until 2027 for something to change. We have the lepers colony, but there is a colony of lepers. The colony of lepers is the one that the lepers recognizing the limitation that they live with they are constrained they recognize it and then they figure out a way to come out of the mess they are in and the way out is very simple one you either pick up the gun which many people have variously allocated 
or you take the other path, which is the one I have always advocated, non-violent. But non-violent should not be equated with cowardice. It should not be equated with non-action. It should not be equated with simply folding our hands and waiting for death to come. At some point, we are going to have to draw a line in the sand. I have said that pretty often, right? So this is the line I want us to draw in the sand. Timbu is already the president of Nigeria. No amount of denials will change that. If you removed Tinubu tomorrow and you kept any number of the many persons that you and I would prefer to have in that office, with the system remaining as it is, where INEC can pronounce whoever they care as having been elected, and where the courts, as corrupt as they are, would ensure that your will do not prevail. For as long as that remains the case, 2027 is lost. So if we can all agree on that, let's be clear about something. Remove Tinubu, nothing will change. Put any one of the other ones. Remove the state houses of assemblies and all of that until such a time as when the system changes. And that system will not change if you do not change the operators of the system. The first demand that must be unequivocal across the length and breadth of Nigeria is a demand for electoral reform. When I say electoral reform, let me be clear. It is not one of those endless journey to nowhere. We must set a timeline. I am of the view that we should set Tuesday the 3rd of December as timeline for this to happen. Let a bill be before the National Assembly making clear that one, independent candidacy must be allowed in our electoral process. And I will explain why. If you have independent candidacy, the powers of the political parties, the need to band the hand behind a behemoth in order to thwart the will of the Nigerian people will be broken. Those who believe themselves relevant to the lives of their communities will not need to win any party's nomination to be able to run in election. That is first. The second thing that must happen, electronic transmission of results from the polling unit level must become compulsory and it must be unambiguously spelled out in that amendment. Let us be clear. When I say February 3rd, what I'm saying for February 3rd is very simple. Once upon a time, if we... I've heard multiple times people will say, okay, let's have a protest to demand this or protest to demand that. Privately, I will speak to organizers of this protest and tell them, I don't trust this system. You only protest to somebody who has the capacity to listen to you. These ones do not have the capacity to listen or the will to change. So going to protest will not work. I used to say this repeatedly and I stand by what I used to say. But protests come in different forms. What I am proposing, and I would like to hear what you all have to say, let's take our time, let's, let's talk through this and let's debate it. I'm of the opinion that we should have a national seat at home on the 3rd of December. I was careful to run away from the 2nd. I don't want to have a situation where our iPod brothers and myself will now be conflicted with each other. That is not to denigrate whatever anybody is doing to win their freedom. But I am proposing, I repeat myself, 3rd of December, let us sit at home. Nobody is forcing anyone to do so. Those who wish to go, if you are not touched by the problems that have overtaken all of us, then don't even go out. But we cannot call you to the street because of fear of you being shot and killed. We can't call you to the street for fear that the state will energize their counterparts in the criminal world to attack you or hijack the protest. But we can urge you one day, just one day, at least give them the understanding that you are tired of this gate where you are sat. And it's for one single demand. Reform the electoral process. Look, would they listen? I don't know. But are you listening? That is what is important. Sit in your house on that day. Let them see by you sitting in your house. I'm not saying go out and block road. I'm not saying go and burn tires. I'm not saying throw stones. Sit in your house. Those who want to go out, allow them to go where they want to go. If you have been touched and you are interested in anything changing, if you say that you desire Odua Republic, for instance, let, let, let's talk about this. You desire Odua Republic and you desire it not stepping on the blood of the people, but you want to mobilize them for change, which you desire. And the same goes for my Biafran brothers as well. You desire the Biafran Republic, but you are not going to do it against the will of the people. You are going to have to win it politically. If that is the case, why not join in persuading the people to sit at home so that our votes must be allowed to count? It is in our votes meaning something that will become free. Whatever it is you desire, when your votes are free, run as the iPod candidate in a battle against that stupid mascot that is slapping people. If your votes begin to count, run anywhere in Nigeria to propagate your ideas and ideals, unless, of course, you have no interest in democracy prima facie and you are merely interested in lording your own view over other people. Democracy exists when the will of the people is respected. So insist on the sacrosanct of our votes just one day. It may or may not do nothing. 
But we cannot continue to sit down, belly aching, waiting for 2027. We can't. We simply can't. You know, I can't get rid of this song in my head since my friend passed. Just like I can't get over the shock of his passage. He says, she, he told, she, already, me, or not, Do what you will do. Time is going. If you are in, the, if you are in your 50s like me, you witnessed a functional country. As dysfunctional as it was, it did work to an extent. It worked to educate me, the, the son of the nobody. Nobody. But that system worked to educate me because my, my mother, God bless her, had working. Visionary. But she, could, she had a functional system to work with. Do you understand? Where is the system now? It's gone. It's gone. If you are waiting for 2027, it's gone. Everything is getting progressively worse. Every blessed day. Every day is getting worse. You remember, most of you, the only time you go to the villages now is when you go burying some grandparent or uncle. Nobody goes to the villages anymore. Just like nobody really comes to Nigeria anymore. We only come to Nigeria to bury people. It's become a burial place of lives and hopes. Are we going to keep folding our hands like this? How? Look, for a long time, I have barely ached, diagnosed our problems, sought to persuade you to see what should be right on top of your nostrils. Many times I'll tell you things you'd consider outrageous. Like, time, like you say, prove all lies. You prefer your lying pastors and imams who feed you religious idiocy and fantasies. They ask you to pray. They told some jokers about you to come and pray for 40 days again. The one who started, who started they were busy worshipping in the fair. The other day, is also meant to be leading you in national prayers. They are praying on you, pretending to pray for you. All of them, without exception. All. All of them. God is the God of truth. What happened to the truth on their lips? See, it's not a gentle more, and they are asking you to pray. Let us be clear. If you are not going to pick up guns to free yourselves, and I don't recommend it, they would prefer that you take that. They are the purveyors of violence, they are the owner of the levers of violence. Saw them elevating them, say, Oh to national president. Lagos has gone national, that's what they are telling you. Killer squads in every state to silence you if you dare to speak. And you are still there, debating whether you should sit at home for one day. Let us dare to speak with one voice, just one day. Sit at home. Just sit in your house. And it will go better for anybody who dare to talk to me about it's my right as a citizen to sit in my house and to counsel my fellow citizens. You have to pretend that we're in a democracy, right? Mm -hmm. All of us have to pretend we're in a democracy. I'm pretending we're in a democracy. You are also having to pretend that we're in a democracy. And if we're in a democracy, it is my right as a citizen to peacefully sit in my house. I am not forcing anyone to stay in their own homes. But I'm asking you, you, you're asking me, how can one galvanize Nigerians to sit at home? Go out there on your own. I'm doing my own bit. You do your own. I do mine. You do yours. Go out there. You are the ones who need to speak to people. Help them understand the need. This is a peaceful way of forcing the change that we require. Let's try it. Let's try it for a change. The lepers colony is the one built for the lepers. The colony of lepers is the one built by the lepers themselves. One makes you a victim. One makes you complicit. We are becoming complicit in our own enslavement. Willing impotently, demanding change from those who profit from the situation we are asking to be changed. At what point, pray? Exactly at what point is enough won't be enough? If we are not going to go out on the streets, if that's too difficult because we are afraid of them, how about sitting in your home for one day? <sighs> I really don't have much to say anymore. Your will say this. Timo Basso for me. Timo Bay, no jewelry on me. And you can kill whoever. If I told you that there's fire out of the waters, stop arguing with me. Demand the ashes of me. I am telling you here and now the result for 2027 elections across the length and breadth of Nigeria without leaving a single thing to chance have already been written. If you wait until 2027, we've lost already. Not only have we lost election, we've lost our lives, we've lost road, we've lost hope. They said renewed hope. Now lie, these ones have come to evaporate hope. 
and I'm telling you here and now, get off your lazy ass. Get off your lazy heart. I don't talk my own. No. This one don't pass the go 20. This is tell ourselves what to do. This one is not about this is what is happening. This, that's the person to blame. We've done enough of that. This is time to do something. This is not time for 2027. I fold my hands, don't they look for 2027? If you dare to sit down and wait for 2027, I tell you here and now, 2027 is already lost. One day with purpose. We are demanding the electoral act be amended and those two are irreducible minimum one electronic transfer from the polling unit level two independent candidacy for nigerians if it's a democracy there shouldn't be bars holding people from access to it i've had my say and i hope you've heard i don't see how passes i don't talk about what you do with it is entirely your hands have you blessed week ahead of you Remember, this at this time next week, when we are meeting, may God preserve our laws. I imagine that we'll have sufficient time to debate this proposal amongst ourselves. If sufficient consensus might be had, then we definitely should hold December 3rd as a sit at home nationwide. Thank you very much. God bless you. Because I don't see a reason why um, they protest for 10 good days against something the government that get ahead to also. Um, propose or increase the same thing that the masses came up to protest against that means they don't even care and it's true the nigerians don't care the Nigerian government don't care about nigeria because there's no way you tell me that you care about the masses you say that you are going to increase minimum wage till today it have not been put into bill that they should pay seventy thousand dollars some persons are not yet receiving seventy thousand minimum wage but yet the government are here to increase school fees increase fuel price increase bags of rice increase tariff for electricity increase everything Everything in Nigeria is is on a hike, despite the low salary that people are receiving. Okay, let, let's 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 take a practical talk on this now. Someone making, let's say, I'm making hundred hundred thousand, say, which we know that is not is not true. People that make hundred thousand in this country are very few. Let's make hundred thousand dollars a month now, and then you have a child or you have, you have children that go to school. Where school fees is around fifty thousand dollars for one person. That means in a term. You pay for the two children that hundred thousand naira is gone. So you have to start waiting for the next salary to be paid. And then if it's being paid, you now have to start paying for buying books, mm -hmm. um, the food, unko, the clothes, unko, all more. You used to pay for house rent, you used to pay for electricity bill, all these things. If you pay, if you need, you that you have zero cobble left on you. That means you are, you are suffered. In this country, we are suffering. That are those things. And that's people are leaving the country. Imagine a country where someone will spend five years, six years studying the doctor, only for to live outside the country to go and practice it in the country. That means they are developing other countries. But that are those things. Because other countries know the benefits they are getting from Nigeria. So they accept doctors, nurses with their wide hand open. They give them benefits that they, they, will, they, will, they will be able to reject. But in a country, we have such good people that are not that doctors nurses but they don't give them the platform they don't give them the job they don't give them the kind of privileges that they need to function and to work with they don't pay them well they owe them professors that are earning how much whereas we have politicians that are earning in millions of naira so, so these are the things we see in our nigeria then we ask ourselves where are we heading to because with this is happening nobody will want to be in nigeria come 2027 20, everybody wants to leave like i said i have friends other nurses now Nothing now. The main reason why I said nothing is not because I want to be a nurse, because I don't want to leave the country. So they have to use nothing as a route to leave the country. Then there's, there's, there's a person that are doctors just to leave the country. Some persons are just doing one or two. Everything have, everything, everybody is trying their possible best to leave the country. That's what they want. They are trying everything possible to leave this country called Nigeria. Because why? The um, government is not making it easy for anybody. I saw a video where someone was interviewed in other country and the person denied Nigeria totally, like denied that she is not a Nigerian, denied it totally because of what the government are not giving them that privilege that they need. You see a good person, a good intelligent student that knows how to innovate, how to create, but the government are not using them. Rather, they are busy putting people that are not competent enough to be in the position leaders because of why? Because they helped you to secure the seats. That means you are all after the seats and not the people that voted you in. Because if it's the if it's the people that voted in, we have people like the Kuba Asari that, that, that are complaining now because Tinubu is not taking care of them after he promised that after winning the seat, he will take care of them. And at the end, he is not, he is not taking care of them. Don't, don't take a look at what's, what's happening in, in the north. 
They are complaining because Tinubu is not, is not all so taking care of them. Then where and where will we start from this country? We are all, oh, God, God should help us, right? God will help us in this country. So I would like to get the video you watch in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Like I said, subscribe, help us grow. That's the only way you can be able to get notified and I will drop new content because we give you guys gist on a daily basis, day by day. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned, guys. I will see you in my next video.